pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Let the record show that all members of the City Council are present this evening. There is a copy of the Open Meetings Act posted on the west wall of the meeting room and is open to uh, uh, public view by any members of the uh, public at any time. First item on the agenda is the consent agenda. All items under the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or citizen so requests. First item is item A, approve agenda as submitted. Item B, receive and place on file all notices pertaining to this meeting. Item C, receive and place on file all materials having any bearing on this meeting. Item D, approval of minutes of regular meeting on January 2nd, 2018 as on file in the city clerk's office. Item E, approval of treasurer's report of claims in the amount of $360,090.71. Item F, approval of Boswell report of claims in the amount of $78,805.94. Item G, approval of public funding request from Main Street Beatrice in the amount of $466.25 for the Chocolate Lovers Shopping Day Extravaganza event. Item H, approval of public funding request from Main Street Beatrice in the amount of $280 for the Preservation Month and Mother's Day tour events. Item I, approval of public funding request from Main Street Beatrice in the amount of $949 for flowers and plants for downtown planters, bump outs, and new parking lot improvement projects. Item J, approval of public funding request from Main Street Beatrice in the amount of $846.25 for the Beatrice Farmers Market event. Item K, approval of Beatrice Plus funding request from Main Street Beatrice in the amount of $1,125 for downtown planters and new parking lot improvement projects for 2018 as recommended by the Beatrice Plus Advisory Board. And item L, approval of Beatrice Plus funding request from Leadership Beatrice Class of 2017-2018 in the amount of $4,500 for improvements to the Big Blue Dog Park as recommended by the Beatrice Plus Advisory Board. Are there any items that any council member wants removed from the consent agenda? Anyone from the public? Mr. Catlin? Mayor, I would move that all the items listed <coughs> under the consent agenda be approved, accepted, and or ratified as presented. Second. Move by Catlin, seconded by Morgan, that all items under the consent agenda be approved. Your vote, please. And that is approved. Mr. Fairbanks? Yep, I'm on. That is approved 8-0. Gentlemen, my, my gloves were covering it up. Okay. Thank you for all braving the cold and coming out this evening. Next item is public hearing and bids. Public hearing regarding the rezone application of Matthew Ideas for Gage County Parcel ID number 14507000, commonly known as 606 South 6th Street, Beatrice, Nebraska. And rezone applications of the City of Beatrice for Gage County. Parcel ID numbers 01035400000, number 01451300000, 01451300000. Zero one four five one zero 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 and zero one four five one five zero 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 located between the commonly known addresses of six oh six South Sixth Street and nine hundred South Sixth Street on the east side of Highway seventy seven from GI General Industrial to GC General Commercial. Yes, so this is a rezoning application. I'm to start with Matt Ideas and looking for his gun shop that he's looking to put in uh, down in that vicinity. Uh, as we look through this, uh, in order for him to sell items there, it needs to be zoned general commercial, general industrial is not allowed that. And so what we propose is rezoning his shop from general industrial to general uh, commercial. In doing so, we were looking at what else in that area should be addressed while we were there. 
If you remember, several years ago, we went through and rezoned everything along the highway, most everything along the highway to general commercial. Uh, the only area that we hadn't really gotten to was this area down here. And so we had um, Matt go out and talk to the adjacent property owners of who else would be interested or willing to go from general industrial to general commercial. Uh, and so the other parcels you see included in there were ones that were willing to make that switch at this time, uh, including properties owned by the city of Beatrice. So that's why there's two applications, one for Matt and his property, one by the city of Beatrice and the other properties uh, either the city owns or other property owners would be wishing to be uh, rezoned to general commercial. Um, for those at home, this is areas essentially across the street from the Dempster's property. Uh, it's most of that block in that area is where it's at. And Planning and Zoning has reviewed this and they've recommended approval. Questions? From the council? Is it just the, <coughs> is it just the one large, large block or does it continue down? Well, that's our property, isn't it? That's yeah, adjacent to the river. You go, from, there's from one more property eight. south of here that didn't get rezoned. Okay. Uh, that gentleman at this point didn't want to be rezoned. You go south of that one, it's all city gotcha. Beatrice property in the floodplain. Yeah. Uh, it's still technically overlaid as <coughs> a general industrial, but it's in the floodway, and so we did not get down and rezone that one. No. Anybody else? Anyone from the public? Mr. Catlin, we can close the public hearing. Mayor, I have a move that the public <coughs> hearing be closed at 7.06 p.m. Second. Move by Catalan, second by Billsbach, that the public hearing be closed at 7.06 p.m. Your vote, please. That is approved 8-0. Next item is resolution number 6170, declaring the official intent of the city of Beatrice, Nebraska, to reimburse itself for expenditures made in connection with the acquisition of certain public safety equipment for the city of Beatrice. Mayor, I would move that resolution number 6170 be passed and adopted. Second. By Catlin, seconded by Morgan, that resolution number 6170 be passed and adopted. Mr. Templemeyer. The city of Beatrice, we're proposing issuing a public safety debt this year. Uh, started with, we were looking at, as you guys know, we put in the budget, installing new software for 911 communications. We were told throughout that process that our servers we had on hand were adequate. They would do the job. Uh, however, when they came here for further review. They informed us that no, our servers were not adequate and we would need new ones to the tune of about $44,000, which was not a budgeted item. Um, in addition to that, as you know, we had a police car that was uh, totaled here recently. Uh, while insurance is going to pay for a large portion of it, it is not gonna pay for all of it. Uh, we had, um, in order for us to get a new vehicle, I should say, we had three new vehicles set for the next public safety debt. We're looking to move one of those vehicles up uh, to hear. So the reimbursement resolution that you have before you is a way for the city to go out and spend our general fund dollars today. And when we issue the public safety debt, we, we will reimburse ourselves for those expenditures uh, when, when those proceeds come through. So Mr. Kerr, when that, when that lightning hit our, our communication system, didn't we upgrade the servers and stuff when we replaced those? Some servers, yes. Other servers, no. Not all servers were damaged as a result of the lightning strike. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from the council or from to, or for Tobias? When does that happen? When does that occur? When will this public safety debt be issued? I'd probably say within the next couple of months. Um, I believe we have a few items that are ready to go. We've got to work through uh, with Emeritus to get the bonds issued for, ready for, come back to you guys, have you approve the issuance and all those things. So relatively shortly. Any other questions from the public? All right, your vote, please. And that is approved 8-0. Resolution number 6170 has been passed and adopted. Next item is resolution number 6171, entering into a subordination agreement with Midwest Housing Initiatives, Inc. and Horizon Bank to subordinate the security interests of the city to the superior indebtedness of Horizon Bank. Mayor, I would move that resolution number 6171 be passed and adopted. Second. By Catlin, second by Claybaugh, that resolution number 6171 be passed and adopted. This has to do with the part of the Excel development. This is the Porter Estates portion of it, which is the senior housing uh, portion of that project. Uh, as part of our LB840 loan, we knew that we would be subordinate to whoever was their construction loan or lender on that matter. Um, after the property transferred from the hospital to Excel or whichever subsidiary ended up buying, I think it was MHI, 
we waited uh, a while before we filed our deed of trust to give the bank an opportunity to come <coughs> and file theirs. We happened to beat them to the courthouse by a day. And so our lien is actually filed in front of theirs, but pursuant to our LB840 loan agreement, we need to subordinate our LB840 loan to their construction loan. So we're going from first to second. Correct. Which is pretty normal. Yeah. Any other questions of Tobias from the public? <clears throat> All right, your vote, please. And that is approved 8-0. Resolution number 6171 has been approved. Next item is resolution number 6172, entering into a confidentiality agreement with Southern Power Company regarding potential investment in or acquisition of certain electric generation assets, project development partnerships, and or real estate property, as recommended by the Board of Public Works. Mayor, I would move that resolution number 0172, <coughs> excuse me, 6172 be passed and adopted. Second. By Catlin, seconded by Kerr, that resolution number 6172 be passed and adopted. Right. As we continue to exit away from MPVD and, and move into the, the power markets, we are continuing to look for ways to resolve our long-term capacity needs. Uh, one of those ideas or projects that's been presented to us is through Southern Power Company. Now, this is not Southern Public Power that Neil Needfeld is in charge of in Grand Island. This is Southern Power, which is a large uh, power company out of Georgia area throughout Southern uh, United States. They have presented uh, some projects that we may be interested in, but in order to continue to pursue them further and identify whether or not they are viable projects for the city of Beatrice, exchange some numbers, see whether or not they make economic sense for us, they would ask us to sign a confidentiality agreement, whereas materials we give them remains confidential, information they give us remains confidential. And so that's what you see before you tonight. Questions? Anybody? From the public. All right, your vote, please. That is approved 8 0. Resolution number 6172 has been passed and adopted. Next item is the ordinance. Ordinance amending the zoning map for the city of Beatrice, Nebraska by changing the zoning of Gage County parcel ID number, bear with me, please, 01450700, commonly known as South, uh, 606 South 6th Street, Beatrice, Nebraska and Gage County Partial IDs 01035400000, Parcel number Parcel number 01451500, located between and commonly known as addresses 606 South 6th Street and 900 South 6th Street on the east side of Highway 77 from GI General Industrial to GC General Commercial. Good job, Mayor. <laughs> yeah, good job. All right, Mayor, I would move that said ordinance be given number 18-001. The title, therefore, be approved, the rules be suspended, and said ordinance be read by number only three times tonight. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Cook, that the ordinance be given number 818001. <laughs> the title approved, the rules suspended, and the ordinance be read by number only three times tonight. A motion to suspend the rules is not debatable. Your vote, please. And that is approved 8 0. Ordinance number 18. Dash 001 by number the first time, ordinance number 18001 by number the second time, and ordinance number 18001 by number the third and final time. Mayor, I would move that ordinance number 18-001 be passed and approved. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Billsbach. That ordinance number 18-001 be passed and approved. Any further discussion? Yeah, this is simply the property we just discussed in the public hearing. So. <coughs> Questions, anybody from the public? All right, your vote, please. And that is approved 8 0. <coughs> Ordinance number 18001 has been passed and approved. 
Next item on the agenda is the public forum. The purpose of the public forum is for the presentation of an item by the general public to the city council for consideration at a later date. No discussion or action will be taken by the city council at this time. Anything for the public forum from the council, from the public? All right, seeing none, we go to discussions and reports. And the first thing on the agenda is the Engage quarterly report. Walker Zulkowski, welcome back, welcome home. I think everyone should have my quarter four report. It's uh, shortened up. It doesn't have quarters one, two, and three in there, but um, try to get you the information that I think is, is good and moving in, in quarter four. Uh, so I'll, I'll hit on some of the things that happened in Q4, but it's gonna be kind of a year wrap up too. Um, just skip to the last page of my kind of my highlighted thing. So if, you, if you're following along, I'll just go right to there. But I think starting off quarter four, I really kind of put a stamp on 2017, but two of the big things that we got in, in Q4 was we were selected as community, or Beatrice was selected as community of the year by the Nebraska, or the Southeast Nebraska community of the year by the Nebraska diplomats. And then one of our local companies, Rare Earth Salts, was selected as a innovator of the year um, in Southeast Nebraska. So we've had a ton of stuff happening in, in all of 2017. I think just good things it was just really snowballing, but that to me was just really a stamp, kind of a def definition of, of 2017. So um, this is a good way to, to end the year and definitely sets the bar for us for 2018. Um, as we are setting goals and, and trying to figure out how we're doing our processes and how we have things in place in the office, um, we're just really trying to go back to numbers, back to data, and, and looking at things and making sure that people are opening our emails or going to our website and attending our trainings. And so the only thing we gotta do that is by tracking some data. And so we've started to do that in 2017, give us some things to look forward to 2018. But um, I think we're doing some things right. And then one of my top bullets up there is web traffic. So we had a conversation with uh, the, the folks that host our website. We meet with them monthly to make sure that we're putting things on our website in the right place and people are clicking where they need to be and the information is there. But he kind of stopped and said, well, these numbers are kind of blowing, blowing me out of the water here. It's kind of crazy. And we said, what is it? And he goes, well, your, your numbers from Q2 to Q3 were really off the charts. And we said, well, why? And he's like, I, I don't know. You need to tell me, like, what have you been doing? And so we said, well, we've just been really deliberate in what we're doing with our social media, when we send our newsletters, what's in our newsletters, making sure that people can click on certain links and it's taking it where we want them to and sending all of these things and putting things on social media or newsletters in front of people at times we know they're going to open them. So just trying to understand who our customers are. And he's like, well, whatever it is, it's, it's, it's working incredibly well. He's like, we usually see a downturn um, from this quarter to this quarter and we had a 32.5% increase in our web traffic. So um, they actually asked us if we would put together a webinar and um, this company hosts websites all over the country and they said, well, if we put together a webinar, would you want to lead it and kind of share some of the insights and some of the things that you guys are doing to make your numbers so good? So I guess that kind of justifies, I guess, what we're, we're trying to do. So um, some of the other systems we have in place, we have our CRM, our customer um, relationship management database, ProsperWorks is what we use. Um, that, that offers us a lot of ways to, to track some data too, so we can see how many emails we send how many emails we got, how many projects we opened, how many projects we're tracking. Um, <clears throat> it's crazy to kind of look at these things, but in, in Q4 alone, um, in and out, we had 6,730 emails. Not that I read every single one of those, but that is a lot of, a lot of information going through our minds. And so to decipher which, what's important and not is, um, it's good to have systems in place to, to help us with that. So our social media following is going up like crazy too. It increased almost 36%. Um, in 2017 so um, yeah we're just gonna keep cranking on those I guess those are um, some good things for us to look at and understand in 2017 and be able to set some goals for 2018 so. um, <clears throat> we also in Q4 our hotel study wrapped up we got that in the hands of some some of our potential developers um, this shows a demand I think it's for 55 rooms um, so there's the question that we set out to answer was do we need a hotel or do we not because we've heard it on both sides of the fence <clears throat> and the study says yes you do need one 
Uh, we're kind of in an interesting bubble of 55 rooms. It's not a giant <coughs> facility, but it's also not little too. So um, it just building the right facility that meets meets our demand now, but then also what we think our demand is going to be in the future as some of these other projects and things come online. So um, <clears throat> I guess I'd offer or ask for your support on if you run into any hotel developers or anybody that has interest in that field to uh, take a look at our report. It's on our website. We forwarded it to some folks, but um, we've driven around town. There's a lot of things going up right now. Hotel is not one of them, and we want it to be. So um, <clears throat> yeah, just if you if you have anybody connect us to would be greatly appreciated. So um, one of the other things we did mostly a lot of over kind of the holiday break, took advantage of our interns being in town and having some free time, but we've just done a deep clean of our office and we've had files and things everywhere from since Engage has started and we're just digitizing everything. So our shredder bin is full, but everything we have is now um, on our share drive or on our ProsperWorks CRM or in our email or some other place so we can get to anything from a few clicks from anywhere in the world. So if uh, we're on the road or working at home late at night or whatever it is, um, everything is, is at our fingertips now. And it's easier to find too. I, mean, I can just go in and, and search for any file that might have gotten stored away or lost in a file cabinet. Our interns have gone through, written on every single thing. Uh, uploaded it, scanned it, <clears throat> and um, made it searchable too. So I guess just less cluttered desk is making us all be able to work on other things instead of files. Um, well, another good highlight from Q4 was the Nebraska Business Development Center was down here and they worked with our 12 local businesses, um, some from here in Beatrice and some from around the county and <clears throat> got really good reviews from that. I think it was really beneficial. We know that some of those businesses are still working with their NBDC consultants to wrap up some things that got started during that week, but um, I hope we could do it again. It was really a, a, a one-time thing. It was a special circumstance that NBDC had asked, to, <coughs> asked us to partner with them on and they applied for sp specific SBA funding for it. Um, but to do another another seminar, another week like that, I think would be awesome. So we'll probably try to find something like that next year. Because um, we've had businesses come to us since doing this NBDC training and we thought, dang, you would have been really perfect for this training too. So um, the good thing about having the connection with NBDC though is we can push a lot of these businesses on to them now. Uh, one of the things you guys talked about, Excel development, you um, already hit on some of that from the agenda, but in Q4, the transaction for them to actually acquire the old hospital um, took place, which we felt like really cemented the project. You know, there was nobody really had any skin in the game um, until there was an actual transaction. So now that Excel has it and they're moving forward, I think you know it's there was just a lot of things up in the air, and to have that going is is a huge feather in our cap. I think with uh, shows dividends from the hotel study or the housing study that was completed. So um, we have an annual meeting. Somebody just asked me about where the invitation was. I think I've sent out a lot of save the dates for our annual meeting and banquet, which is going to be on February 13th. We'll actually have an official invitation coming out uh, through email here, hopefully in the next week. Um, but make sure you mark that down. Uh, at our annual meeting, we're, we're mixing it up a little bit so that people can get some value out of the day. We're going to start it off and kind of go two different directions. So I think tentatively right now we'll probably kick off at like 530. And in one direction we'll have some folks go that are taking part in this other grant opportunity that we won with the <coughs> Heartland Center for Leadership Development. So um, all the communities or people that have interest in participating in that facilities planning discussion over the next couple of years will go um, one Direction, our Heartland Center folks will have a little training about some of the, their expertise and then overview of the facilities planning thing. And then um, all of our board members and um, member investors that um, can vote will go a different way and we'll hold our annual officer election and do some kind of 2017 recap. Then we'll come together for our actual <coughs> banquet, have a meal, and then the speaker is going to be Barry Kennedy, um, who's the outgoing president of the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce. So as he sets sail on his retirement, we'll get him down here probably his last time. So we didn't get a legislative update this year from them. 
from the state chamber. And so I'd asked him to come down. <coughs> That we'll have probably about 100, 150 business-minded folks in the room for the NGH banquet, and they said that's a great, a great uh, group of people we'd want to talk to. So, um, and then uh, 2018 priorities. So I tried to make it as simple as possible. What we're looking at in 2018, our big focus, we really got kicked off in 2017 with some of our marketing and social media stuff, but it, it's quality of life and. You know, we have a lot of projects going on in the community and in the county, but making sure people are proud of what they're, what's going on, that they're excited about what the future is, that they're telling other people that this is a great place to live and to work. Um, so quality of life is really going to be a lot of the things we go back to in 2018. Uh, like I said, we have a lot of projects going on, but we don't have a place to put a lot of these companies. So if they're falling in other communities or they're still looking for a place to go, so. We're gonna focus on getting buildings built, spec buildings built, and getting sites identified. And sites that, um, for some of these big, heavy duty, um, stinky businesses that we want because they spend lots of money and hire lots of people, but nobody wants them in their backyard. So we'll try to find some sites that work for those guys. Um, and then also some sites that work for just logistics companies, warehousing, transportation, there might be a couple different um, indus industrial sites that we try to focus on in next year. And the last thing is is targeted recruitment. So we've kind of had just a shotgun approach to any project that comes our way. We just jump on it and send them a proposal. But um, I think this year we're going to take a little bit more of a deep dive into what those projects are. Do they fit our workforce? Are they going to help or hurt our local industry? <clears throat> are they a key partner? Are they a key customer? You know, what are they to our local industry? And then going after them. And, you know, I put in, in an email the other day, but just gloves off. If we hear about a project, we're going to be the first ones at the door. And um, I just think, you know, we have a good story to tell. And if we can get to the door or get to there and tell it first and, you know, take the doubt out of negotiating with all these other communities that um, we should be able to land some more projects. So simple three-pronged approach to next year in addition to the other millions of things that come in in our office all, all day long but it's always good to have things to go back to when we have downtime. Would that give us a brief synopsis of your uh, South Korea trip? Yeah so um, I've been on a couple different trade missions and um, have good relationship with a lot of the, the trade delegation that, that travels the globe trying to build some relationships in um, Cobus Block from the Department of Economic Development who leads international recruitment for the, for the state. They called and said, hey, we're, we're thinking about starting some negotiations, starting some relationships in South Korea. Do you want to be a part of that? And I said, well, absolutely. You know, we don't have any Korean companies, but we have a lot of foreign investment, so why not Korea? And so we really went into it kind of with blinders on, and the whole purpose of this trip was just to build relationships with a country that we don't really have a whole lot of trade with other than some beef exports um, and a little bit of some food manufacturing and research that's going on at Innovation Campus. And um, so we went in with that, and we just said, well, let's meet with anybody we can. And so we set up two full days of meetings with primarily like industry associations. So the Korean Foreign Trade Association and kind of like the Korea Chamber of Commerce and a lot of membership based organizations and we thought if we build some relationships with those leaders that if we come back and you know we're credible they'll bring some more of their companies some more of their um, their partners to the table and um, it went really well there was actually um, one of those companies that actually showed up to one of those meetings to meet us because they were interested in doing something in the Midwest and we hadn't really been on, or Nebraska really hadn't been on their radar, so um, it shows some promise. And Seoul is where we spent most of our time running around, and it was colder than it was even here in Nebraska, so it wasn't a luxurious vacation. It was trying to wear a suit and run around in a city that you can't read signs in, trying to get to the next meeting on time. Um, but it was, I think, a fruitful trip. I think it'll turn, um, it'll turn some heads over the next few years. We build some relationships and. Um, definitely want to go back. You know, I learned um, you, know, you can start this ball, but if you don't, if you don't maintain these relationships, if you don't go back and continue to put in the effort, you know, it's really not. It's not going to be worth the money that was spent up front. So, um, I think we're going to gather as a team, as our our delegation is going to gather as a team this week and go over all of our notes, make sure that we are assigning things correctly, of who's reaching back out to some of the things that we took away, and then. 
um, as those progress over the next few months, we'll probably look at going back again and following up on some some of the things that we got started. So, one other note on that was the, probably the coolest thing is we hosted a reception for potential businesses looking at expanding into the United States, and there were like 40 businesses that showed up. Um, partly because we, we want to say it was because we're in Nebraska, but also the, the embassy let us host it at the ambassador's house, and it was a really cool facility, but um, pretty neat to be able to give an, have the opportunity to give a really formal presentation um, standing in front of an emblem that says U.S. Embassy. Pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty neat. Yeah. Questions? Questions? Rich? Um, Toby, you remember here earlier in the year, are you, you, you said something about a spec building. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Glennis and I was talking before you came that a lot of these, these smaller businesses are, at, are looking for smaller, <coughs> and we had talked about making a big building, and, and do you remember, Tobe, yes, when we were talking about that? Are you still having a lot of people wanting these smaller sectioned off buildings? Say if we would build a big spec building and section it down to three or four different sites, uh, would that be helpful? Yeah, so we have, Are we turning away people because of the smaller, I'm smaller buildings? I'm not turning away, we're just struggling finding, you know, 15 or 20,000 square foot that meets the specs. So yeah, what right now I, we have two probably really interested um, parties looking at doing a spec building. Um, there really are probably four or five potential um, folks that we're working with and that's, the main thing is how do you make, how do you build a building that if, like, let's say like the Neapco thing happens again where you put up a spec building, then pretty soon they have 400,000 square foot. How do you grow with that whole site? But also be able to accommodate, you know, three or four different businesses that might go into it right away. So building something where if you landed someone and they wanted 15,000 square foot, you could build a temporary wall. Or if they wanted 25,000 square foot, you build a temporary wall. Being able to double on the backside. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, Kind of built in mind with, I guess, low-hanging fruit of who you can get to take it right away, but the end game is to not, to not really uh, hamstring ourselves by building something that only fits you know, small projects of 15,000 square foot. Well, if we would put up a building that had floating walls and, and a removable wall. To Say that, that again. We would build up a building that would have floating walls, and uh, <coughs> didn't Hearst Florida have a, a, some type of wall where they could uh, expand if they had to their mm -hmm. outside walls? Yes. Uh, we could look at something like that, but it, it, would it warrant? Can you can you say that we could possibly attract some more businesses? Because they can't take them kind of businesses downtown to empty buildings, correct? No. They have to be in an industrial. <clears throat> I have a list. I haven't looked at it in a couple of weeks here, but oh, Tobias, I think it's like 20 companies that are speculative companies looking around for space. And so I took... Um, all of their requests, like how many dock doors are you looking for, how much office space do you need, how much um, industrial space or warehousing space, or what is the actual bulk of that space you need, and then averaged it all out and essentially came out to everyone needs a dock door and 25,000 square foot and then like a 500 or 1,000 square foot office. That, that essentially was averaging everything that's looking around right now. I took out some of the big ones. I mean, there's, there's a project that was looking for a lot. I think 200,000 or 235,000 square foot or something. Um, so I just didn't include those, but yeah. It <coughs> How many of those buildings that we had out there were spec buildings when we first, do you have any idea? The Ted, do you the, remember? The EPCA was the only one that was. Uh, no, we had quite a few spec buildings over the years. Casper's was the other one. Oh, Casper's right. would have been the other one. <coughs> You're right. They built Casper Jeans built two, so three, so three. I appreciate your comments, Rich, because you're right on target. But there is some private enterprise that's that's uh, really has shown some interest, okay. and I, I I think that's uh, well. Toby and I talked about go. it the first year, maybe putting up a, 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 a spec building to 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 house these smaller ones, because you know if we can get four or five of them in here, uh, that's ten, twenty, thirty, however many jobs that we could bring in. So, which 
kind of going back to the targeted recruitment and then new sites and new buildings, it's rather than waiting for them to come to us, what putting up what we think fits fits the people, the companies that we want to be here. So, you know, as the X marks the Neapcos and the World Lawns need suppliers and customers and are mostly just suppliers closer. Is there the space there that fits for those companies to grow along with the big guys that we already have? Bill, did you were you question? Say something? I, I for Phil, for Phil Walker, I forgot to raise my hand on it then, I'm sorry. <laughs> Scold me. Right. For Storecraft, we have it raised now, it's down to the ground. Do we have any potential there or you know, what's happening or can you say or would that be a no comment? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a ton of potential there. It's in a great location and um, the folks that are doing that project have a lot of ideas. I've heard about a lot of those ideas, but um, I don't know if I can really comment as to what's going to eventually transpire. Well, I think what Phil's getting at is, is there's a lot of rumors going around town, and, and I, I keep telling the people, <laughs> we don't have anything to do with that. that that's private in, individuals. So. Ted? So, in your priorities, the quality of life part of it. Walker, right? I think that that's probably where this body comes in more. And I know, and I'm, and I'm sure that you have these conversations with Stan and with Tobias about that. But my question to you is: Are we doing everything that we need to do? I mean, we're we're, we're enhancing some of our ordinances, dilapidated structures, getting rid of some vehicles, those kind of. I mean, community improvement. I mean, that's part of the quality of life. That's what we're touching on there. And I, it's so, and I've said it before, you know, you can't legislate community pride, but we are legislating community cleanup, and that's part of the quality of life. Is, is there anything that this body should be aware of that we should be setting into our priorities in 2018 to enhance that quality of life provision in your, in your goal? Two things. Um, one plays into this USDA grant with the facilities planning that we're going to do for every community around around the county. Um, <clears throat> it's looking at making sure you have the facilities that attracts young families or gives kids things to do. I think, uh, I don't know how much of a part you could be, but I think a big civic center or a big convention center is something that needs to be on our radar. Um, you know, I just... I taught a couple eighth grade classes the other day and they're like, we just want a place to hang out. Like we want a place to play video games or, uh, you know, and the teacher said the same thing. Like, they just need a safe place to go and chill. Um, so that's one. Um, one of the things, like, we haven't done much with it in the last six, eight months, but uh, after we end up getting this CDBG planning grant or whatever it's going to be, but just the red carpet coming into the city I think is important that is quality of life it when somebody comes over the hill and they're going by the hospital that they're getting the right impression so um, as much as the city can be behind that because it's going to be tough to get every small business or commercial operation along highway 77 to shell out their own money to tear up concrete or paint their building or whatever it is so that encouragement or financial assistance would probably be good. Um, those are the two that come to the top of my head. All right. Well, keep that on your on your Ted wants to know list. Okay. So, that's all I have, Stan. Thank Any you. Any other questions uh, for Walker? Walker, thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for your Thanks hard for work. Thanks for the questions. You bet. Appreciate it. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the city administrator's monthly report. Tobias. Yeah, just going through there, again, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, as far as first off, you talked about dilapidated structures. We have bids going out on three properties this week uh, for demolition, and two of those we already own. Um, but So we have three of those bids going out this next week to be taken down and removed. Uh, the <coughs> property of First and High Street, I don't think you've had a chance to go down and look at uh, that area. It's cleaned up nicely. We've got some work to do yet, but it's going well. Uh, There's a lot more material down there than, than we thought when we got into the project. And we close with Farmers Cooperative tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. So about 10.05, we should own <laughs> the next piece of property there. Um, there's been some question about the building itself that's on that property. We'll probably look to bid some of those items out. There's some interest in people acquiring those. Great, if they can take them and remove them, and if we get a couple bucks, it's 
better for us. Um, Jason has to get the bulldozer back out to the C and D site so he can push in what he has taken out there um, from the first set of cleanup before we can bring the bulldozer back in to work on the next site. And so uh, you may not see the farmer's cooperative property get cleaned up for you know 30 days or so, but that'd be the reason. So on that site, so I had somebody stop me yesterday and ask about you know, the, the total cost of that. So when this is all done, can we get a total cost report on acquisition of all the property where we're at on it? So, because, because, like I said, I had somebody ask me yesterday, and and I sat there and went, oh, let's see, this was this, and this was this, and and you know, I gave them one number, and then the more I thought about it, I said, you know, no, it's probably closer to this. So, I'd, I'd like a final report of total acre, total acres yep. acquired, total cost, and then total cleanup cost. In we two can, separate things. We can put something together for okay. you so you know. Yes, that'd be great. Toby. Yeah. On those demolition properties, I uh, had a guy ask me the other day if, if uh, we would sell some of the properties. I said, we'll sell anything that we can sell. But he said, well, who do I get a hold of? Does he come down and talk to you for the, or someone down at City Hall to get a list of what properties might be available for them to buy? Absolutely. We have a sheet ready at the office as to what properties we own that we're looking to sell. And so if there's somebody who's interested and um, wants a lot here or there for something, uh, just tell them to contact me and we'll give them that list and they can go out and look and see if there's something there that's that works for them. Okay, no. uh, a couple other things, the downtown revitalization grant to update you there. Uh, if you remember, we had 17 properties that were awarded grants. Uh, out of those, one of them has completed all the paperwork and all the work and they've been got their reimbursement from the state and so they're done and, and closed out. Uh, we have seven that have received their notice to proceed, which means they've turned all their paperwork in. They're ready to begin the next step. Most of them are waiting until spring, uh, waiting for the, the weather to warm up a little bit. For some reason nobody wants to go outside and work today. And then they'll head out and start their work and move forward. We have seven more that have signed the loan agreement with the city but have not been issued a notice to proceed because they have not turned all the paperwork in that they need to yet. Uh, most of the time it is being registered with stam.gov that's holding most of them up. Um, once, again, as part of the requirements with the grant, we have to make sure since it's federal dollars, they're going to a company that is registered with the government and they haven't been disbarred or any of those types of things. So that's why you have to go through the stam.gov registration. And then we have two properties who have not yet signed loan agreements um, for various reasons. And so we're still working with them, trying to get them comfortable with the project. Uh, obviously, they were comfortable with their project in the first place, and they have a few lasting questions. We're trying to get those resolved so we can help push them across the finish line and have them move forward. Uh, all those have to be done here in 2018 by the end of October. And so we're, we're going to have a busy season as that stuff kind of gets ramped up. Uh, the ones who are kind of going through the process, it's a learning curve with the federal guidelines. Uh, Davis Bacon has probably been the biggest one. Um, I would say there's not a single person yet who's turned in a Davis Bacon report that's correct the first time. And so I get the joy of reviewing them and sending them back and, and trying to walk them through how to fill those things out correctly. And it's just a learning curve. It's just one of those things that most times people don't do very often. And so, um, as you know, every federal paperwork has the same information written three different times in three different ways, and it all has to be exactly correct. And so we're working through those. Um, Next thing I'll update you about the fire station. We've talked several times about looking at possible bond issuance for the fire station. Um, fire chief and I have met with um, various contractors and builders and, and architects trying to get an idea of how big of a building do you need. Uh, once we have that answered, we can start looking at how big of a piece of property do you need. And, and once we have that, then we can start looking to see what viable sites are out there and start putting things together, get a dollar price. Uh, so we can start presenting it to this body and to the public ultimately to see what makes sense, uh, what properties don't make sense. And so you kind of know, are we looking at a $6 million bond or are you looking at a $16 million bond? I mean, there's a big difference between those and how that all put together. And so we are gathering that information uh, and hopefully have something come back to you here fairly soon so you guys can start making some decisions as that process slowly moves forward. And then finally, the legislature is back in session. And whether that's good or bad, that's for you to decide, but they are back in session. And so there are a number of bills out there that we'll be bringing back to you and, and updating you on how kind of things are progressing uh, as those 
Yeah, you've added it onto here. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Rich, I told you we're talking about the stage two uh, <coughs> revitalization money that's, that, that we're. Uh, once we're done with that, is there a stage three where we can get some more for, uh, or anything like that, to where we can, might be able to tap into some more money for, for uh, facade improvements and stuff? There's, such. there's not a phase three. What you would do is you would go back and apply again for phase one, which means you have to go back and do another study. And then after you got awarded phase one, you could reapply for phase two, just like we did the first time, um, and come back and do. What's that study? What's that study cost? What did it cost us last time? You got any idea? Oh, I Just think it was $30,000. 30. I think it was 30000 Usually the grant usually pays about half of that. You got to wait three years. Yeah, yeah. There's a waiting period because they know there's people out there who are interested in doing it. I'd have to look again. I, I don't remember for sure where they start and stop because. So we could start this by next year, possibly. possibly. That's a competitive grant, and so you go through that process again and. <coughs> Any other questions of Tobias? All right. Uh, our next regular scheduled meeting is on February 5th in these chambers, and then we will have a work session on January 22nd. Mr. Catlin, entertain a motion to adjourn. Hang on oh, that's, I'll, I'll ask him later. Do you have a question? I just, I just want to know where they're, where's the Moore Pond at? Where Moore's Pond at? It has a new property on just west of town. Okay, on Reed Street, is that? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Claybo, you ready for us to adjourn now? I'm, I'm, I'm closer than I was. <laughs> Mr. Gatlin? Mayor, I would move that the meeting be adjourned at 7.46 p.m. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by uh, Billsbach, that we adjourn at 7.46 p.m. Your vote, please. It's approved 8-0. Thank you, everybody, for coming.